are very fortunate to have this exhibition of Picasso in India. This exhibition, you may ask, why did we choose Picasso? Why could we not have asked for the Impressionists or Matisse or some other painter like that? The reason for that is that Picasso is the greatest painter of the 20th century. In his lifetime, from 1900 to 1973, when he died, he has encompassed whatever is modern in art. He stands in the 20th century as the person who was in the forefront of leading the movement of modern art. Those years of 1900 to 1904 were very trying and depressing for Picasso. Shortly after his close friend Casagamus committed suicide, he began to paint sick, gloomy and frowning faces and used blue colors predominantly to depict sadness. Those years are referred to as the blue period in his painting career. Portrait of a Man is a typical example and the lone painting of this period displayed in this exhibition. This melancholic face looks like any average man in the streets of Barcelona. In 1904, Fernande Olivier becomes his girlfriend and his pink period begins. Thereafter, Picasso abandoned the sentimental and literary tone of the blue period and turned to a world of beauty, balance and serenity. His encounter with Iberian statues brought about a turning point in his stylistic development. The use of pink, ochre and grey tones marked his pink period. Head and shoulder of a woman indicates the beginning of Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, a Picasso masterpiece and a milestone in modern art of the century. Avignon is the name of an infamous locality in Barcelona. In this 8 by 8 foot canvas, we see five female nudes. There is evidence of ancient Egyptian and Catalonian frescoes on the faces of three female forms. Two faces resemble African masks. Probably during this period, Picasso was influenced by African masks. Without caring for tradition, he used both styles in one painting. This prominent work of his is kept permanently in the Museum of Modern Art, New York. According to the principles of perspective, a still life called jug of milk and fruits kept on a table would look something like this from a frontal viewpoint. Paul Cezanne made this still life look like this, breaking the rules of traditional perspective. The outcome? Fruits kept at the back appear clearly and fully. The mouth of the jug is seen open as from the top. Two viewpoints are brought together breaking the tradition of perspective. Picasso and Braque stretched and took this idea still further. 
They presented many viewpoints together on the same plane, breaking the rules of perspective. They even broke the shape of objects into basic geometrical forms of squares, triangles, circles and cubes. The mug of beer painting by Picasso, displayed in this exhibition, where objects are broken into basic forms and they are presented from many viewpoints. This realistic sketch of man seated on a chair is made by Picasso. Later, he breaks it into basic forms of cubes, squares, triangles, cylinders, etc. and reorganizes them from different angles. Man with a mandolin. This is an extreme example of similar fragmentation by Picasso. This style of fragmenting and reorganizing the pieces in a painting has been referred to as analytical cubism. Assemblage. Bringing together colored wooden textures, pieces of paper, sawdust, marble dust, lettering stencils, and other colored materials. Picasso and Braque created a new art form. This style was called synthetic cubism. 1917. Picasso meets ballet dancer Olga Koklova in Italy and she becomes his first wife. The influence of his marriage and repeated visits to Greece becomes visible in his works. Moving away from cubism, realistic human figures started emerging in his paintings. Studies. This painting combines cubist still life and classical figures. The canvas appears to be a collection of framed paintings. This bold experiment attempted by Picasso clearly shows his movement from cubism to neoclassicism. Getting inspiration from huge, dramatic architecture, monuments and the classical sculptures of Rome, he painted realistic human figures where Olga was his primary model. This was the time when he indulged with the classical past. In 1927, Marie Therese, a young girl of 17, enters his life. He starts interpreting his love for her on canvas. M and T stand for Marie Therese. By using simple letters, he used a new way of portraying an individual in this painting. When Picasso's relationship with Olga became strained, he portrayed Olga in this distorted and violent manner. The deformation and distortion shows his mental status at that time. Surrealism. Surrealism means beyond realism. Dreamlike images and portrayal of the subconscious Paintings such as Bather and Bather on the Beach have a magical charm even today. Another painting done on a cupboard door using Picasso's visual code of the day. Picasso made quite a few paintings such as these that delve into his subconscious through intimidating forms and thoughts. One thing that always fascinated Picasso was the use of the third dimension. Result, he made quite a few sculptures from foraged objects. He was even called King of Scrap by his friends. This passion took him to a small village called Valori, where he created many masterpieces in pottery and ceramics.
when we examine Picasso's life, many chapters open up in front of us. His personal life and journey through art were intertwined. In 1936, a new woman entered his life. Her name was Dora Markovich. She was a young photographer. He portrayed Dora Markovich like this. Dark but shining big eyes, red nails, black hair and an attractive chin. A face that reflects her personality and spirit. On the other hand, Marie Therese, who had been with Picasso for long, was portrayed by him like this. Fair but faded colors, light blue, light yellow and a typical homely, serene mood. In both pictures, he has shown the face from the front and side. The poses have been made similar deliberately. However much the distortion may be in the two pictures, he not only showed different personalities, but he also showed different moods clearly. of the Spanish Civil War. Picasso's mind was disturbed by the bombing of his small village, Guernica, by Franco. Many sketches were drawn in anger. It is difficult to fathom what happened between 1st May and 30th June of 1937 in Picasso's mind. But the world received a priceless 312 square foot painting, Guernica, a priceless piece of art. Unfortunately, this painting could not be seen in this exhibition. After this, Picasso never painted anything related to war, but he did show war-related thoughts in works like these. Picasso created war-related pictures in typical Picasso style, in which we see shadows of sadness, shadows of death. After the war, in 1949, Picasso created this image, which is used in a poster of the World Congress for the Partisans of Peace. It is perhaps the most widely accepted symbol of peace, even today. Picasso met Francois Guillot in 1943. From 1946, they started living together. And a new chapter opened up in Picasso's life. Woman in armchair. In this painting, Picasso portrayed Guillot something like this. As if every form has been drawn by a compass. It was drawn in a very simplified language. Bold tones of red, blue and green were used in a unique manner. On the other hand, this painting in the exhibition explodes with cruelty and violence. Gillo left Picasso when he was going through the turmoil of war and peace. Picasso painted his pain in this manner. A knife was kept on the bowl full of blood. The dead cock symbolizes himself and the charged wildcat stands for Gillow. Some art critics relate this painting to war and prevailing social conditions. Others correlate it with his broken love affair. After World War II, vibrant colors return to Picasso's paintings. The principles of cubism and significance of space become more and more definite. Nude in Turkish hat. The portrait of Picasso's last female companion, Jacqueline Roux. 
By now, the representation of face as front and profile had been established as a peculiar, distinguishing, almost motif-like factor of the Picasso style. Finally, Picasso leans towards subjects of his Hispanic roots. Landscape is an overview of rural Spain. The family depicts the bond between man and woman. The little child completes the picture. The man wears a matador's cap and the woman's appearance unmistakably Spanish. Musician again clad in a Spanish attire, from hat to shoes, plays a Spanish instrument. And at the end, a very important chapter in Picasso's journey of art, from 1933 to 1939. Volar engravings. On the request of his friend Volar, Picasso created more than a hundred engravings in which he portrayed himself as a half-human and half-bull image of the Greek mythological Minotaur. Minotaur is a symbol of sex and passion. The story goes like this. The studio of the sculptor. The female sculpture comes alive. In the company of amorous beauties, his man-like mask falls off. He metamorphoses into a minotaur and jumps into an orgy. Finally, minotaur is rendered powerless, blinded in his obsession for love. Picasso has portrayed the Minotaur as a violent symbol. The defenseless woman and disemboweled horse symbolize pain and sufferings. But a tender girl on the path of the Minotaur, holding a bouquet in one hand and a candle in the other, is trying to show the wild and dangerous animal the right direction, which may be anti-war or the way of non-violence. Picasso lived his life passionately. Even his personal life he presented before the world without fear or shame, like an open book. Picasso says, if all the ways I have been along were marked on a map and joined up with a line, it might represent a minotaur. <laughs>